Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard, heard no horses. <laughs> Seventeen years old, we fell together, the unexpected slam of steel beams at a construction site, unable to eat, I loved you so much, I became faint, my electric guitar string, the trembling, of phone wires as a train came near by the river I touched your bare arm as mosquitoes rose from the tall grass and water flowed around barges From the tall pylons, concrete pylons stretched the sky as car guards rumbled above the unexpected slam of steel beams at a construction site. Thank you. Thank you. You guys can applaud louder than that. Oh, Beth can't. She's got a broken thumb there, dislocated thumb. Well, here we are at Horses Sing None of It. My name is Ralph Litwin, and our guests today are Chuck Easter. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Laura Troy on flute. Welcome. And Greg Walzer on keyboard. And I think you have something else you're going to play, too. Accordion? Low up. Different kind of accordion. Uh, what do you call this kind of? Do you call it performance art? Do you call it? Well, we call it music poems. Music poems. That's a good right, name for it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, for, you know uh, poems that uh, I've written and we perform music behind them. Um, I have a chord progression that I play, and uh, you know Laura and Greg follow along. But they're you know improvising a little bit as we go along. We don't really ever do anything exactly the same way twice. A little uh, jazzified. A little jazzified. That's right. Yeah. Cool. So, and where do you hail from? Uh, I'm from Somerville. Uh, Laura is from West Patterson, and Greg is near me in Bridgewater. All right. You want to give us another, uh, what did you call it? Music poem. Music poem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> another okay, music sure. poem. OK, this uh, next one we're going to do, it's a fairly long piece. It's called Ocean Cowboy. And it's in uh, four parts. It's about. Uh, a day I spent with my uncle and, uh, and when I was a teenager. And I guess I'll just leave it at that and start in. So. Great. I remember this one. This is great. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and Greg is playing Melodia. Melodica. Melodica. I was close. Some people call it Melodia. Suzuki calls it Melodia. All right. I was closer than I thought I was. <laughs> OK. Ocean 
in the marsh. The wind is thin, like aluminum cans that hold a beer by Uncle Drinks. Water puddled on the ground. Drops left in beer cans I drink when no one looks. Water puddled on the ground like the sadness. All the beer lets me feel. Marsh reeds, long and straight. Cigarettes out of the pack. Reed tops like ash. Water puddled on the ground. Lighter fluid from the thin silver case with the jumping fish. A light rain falls. The way I feel when I'm drunk. Lit cigarette burning my hand. Water puddled on the ground. Thin rain falling over me. Like drops of beer. From the aluminum cans. My drunk uncle won't give me. A crackling picture with fuzzy sound pulled in through aluminum foil moved back and forth by Uncle Hank. John Wayne pummels a soldier who disobeyed orders. A fort of beer cans on the coffee table, an ammunition mound of cigarettes. I'm no cowboy. No soldier, I fancy myself an Indian. Thin breeze in my hair, a peace pipe. I ask Uncle Hank for a cigarette. Smack the devil out of you, boy. The Indians and the Army, mass forces, then a commercial break. Ah, hell. He takes a cigarette from the munitions pile, holds the flying fish lighter. I suck its flame, then blow smoke signals. The movie starts up. John Wayne makes peace with the Indians. Uncle Hank turns off the TV. The picture shrinks down to a single eye that watches us, then fades away. The screen blank, but our beer cans, our Marlboro munitions pile, our Fort Apache, still there.
the rain has stopped. Wet sand plumped to the edge of asphalt. Sun pops from behind clouds like a zip top. Water laps the dock like beer, rising to meet lips. I step from dock to deck, turn the engine. The boat is a horse, pacing its stall. The water stretches out like a prairie. We ride the ocean, its waves rolling buttes. The light on the water turns red. The sun is huge, shines in a crimson streak straight towards us. I get out on the bow, hold the bar like a saddle horn. Water drenches me. I want to let go of the separation between the ocean and me. Slide into the sunset red. I look at the sky, a purplish bruise. My horse bucks me one more time. The water stretched out like a dark prairie. My father, when he comes to pick me up, says, ever hear how many small boats get lost at night? Uncle Hank says, he didn't know anybody was counting. I'm wearing Uncle Hank's clothes rolled at the cuffs and the sleeves. My father tells me I look like I've shrunk. But I know I'm just dehydrated. Not enough beer and salt water to make me look as big as Uncle Hank. And I wonder, would it be the end of me? Sliding off the deck into the crimson lit water, forever rocked, floating in a room, no John Wayne, cigarettes, or beer cans. Just me, floating. An ocean cowboy, ready to be born again. Rolling through the prairie.
Thank you, right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. And I think that is on this yes, it is. recording, which folks can find out about. You have a website? Yes, it's www.chuckeaster.com. And our graphics man is on the ball, right on the on money. Uh, he must have figured that out without my help. Right, I gave him my card, <laughs> and he figured it out with that. <laughs> All right, Dan. Uh, so they can, folks can go to your website and find out where you're performing, I guess. Right, yes. And uh, get on your email list probably. Yes, yes, indeed. And find out about the recording. Right. Now you mentioned that you have a, you're working on a new recording. We are, right. The next recording actually is going to be all instrumental and it's uh, relatively mellow music uh, intended for massage but for any type of relaxation purpose. And you yourself will probably use it sometimes. That's right. You're a massage therapist. <laughs> That's right, yes. <laughs> I, I plan to use it uh, as I massage my customers. That's right. You can make a double sale. That's possible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in a bad economy, you can never be too careful. <laughs> like this music you're listening to? Well, I just have it have <laughs> available for you. Oh. Very good. Well, I want to take care of a little piece of business. We have in the studio some visiting dignitaries with us today from WNTI. Beth and Jules are here in the studio audience observing and applauding. And uh, they have a show on Friday mornings. WNTI is the voice of Centenary College at 91.9. And they have uh, Friday mornings from 10 to noon. Is that correct? That's right. So, uh, Tune in if you're in the within their broadcast signal. They they put on a great show, and in general, WNTI plays great music and non-commercial, listener-sponsored, free-form radio. It's a great radio station. All right. And they, I think they played some of your music they did. on they, there. They did. I was very appreciative of that. Very good. What else you have for us, Chuck? Okay. Well, I was thinking about a piece. Uh, this one is called Drawn to the Flame, and it's basically what it's about. Uh, this is another, a lot of this stuff I write actually has taken place when I was a teenager. This took place when I was, you know, I guess about 16, and it's about a house uh, that blew up in my neighborhood. And uh, fortunately, nobody was in the house, so it's, you know, don't get scared. <laughs> and um, it kind of brought the whole neighborhood together, and, you know, the neighborhood was not always together, so it was an interesting experience in that respect. It's called Drawn to the Flame. The bag for my newspapers, light, kids drawn in by supper, the adults from car to house, not seen. I too go in to eat my father's barbecued chicken, scorched flesh with sticky sweet sauce. My mother puts on plates and we eat in the dining room. An explosion takes the floor beneath us, gasp for breath. Our dinner plates up and down. The three of us rise from our chairs. The neighbors fall out of their houses like cherries from a bowl three and rolling around where they don't belong. The sky is eaten by orange and smoke. The backdraft pulls us in the flame's direction. As the sirens sing, a beautiful house is on fire. 
the roof tossed aside like a bridal veil. A gas explosion. My God, the DeFazios have been burned alive. My mother's face, a look of horror. Mom, I say, the DeFazios are on vacation. I imagine the melted record albums and model planes in Joey DeFazio's bedroom dripping like the sweat down my arm. The firemen set up the hydrant. Water comes out with such force you can stand on top of the hose. The neighborhood men fill with courage Leave them dripping in wet, as if a thunderstorm has suddenly cleared the tense air. All my paper route customers drawn out of their houses by this beautiful woman's perfume. A spent lover. All her possessions, memories, consumed in flames. I love watching this house go. The feeling of heat between us, the feeling of our hearts beating on. paints a picture with words, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Okay. Well, we've got about uh, less than four minutes left in the show. So okay. Do you have a short piece or do you uh, want to? Yeah, we could do a short piece, actually, yeah. We could do a uh, dance. That, uh, I think comes in at about two or three minutes, something like that. Find it here. Okay. Yeah, this is about a uh, girl I knew, well, I guess I might have been 19 by then, going up slightly. And uh, she was uh, a very good dancer, a lot better dancer than me. And she used to kind of uh, drag me along the floor, and I would follow her, and we'd look great in spite of the fact that I couldn't dance a step. So, anyway. I followed her lead as if I had known how to dance all along. A breeze blows a feather through an open house. 
for every motion fell through one point on her waist. The tiny key that opens a long diary. She moves away from me to spin, to tug at my fingers as a kite goes higher. She trusts me enough to catch her when she dips. The girl who almost falls. The warmth of her back. Even when I'm alone, I still feel her dancing in the darkness, the spinning of her hair. Her every motion fell through one point on her waist. I kiss her neck to touch her wound. On the purple flowers, a dragonfly lands, then flies away. A breeze blows a feather through my empty house. I followed you as if I had known how to dance all along. I'm lost without you. Yet your motion is still here. Thanks for joining us on Horses Sing Nineveh. All right, thank you. Chuck, Laura, Greg.